Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Duncan Johnston-Watt. I'm one of two co-founders, and I'm also the CEO of uh, BTP, Blockchain Technology Partners. Long, long time member of the Hyperledger uh, Foundation, also for my sins, co-chair of the marketing committee. So um, happy to talk to you about any of that af afterwards. Um, we also have here Chilla Zigri, who some of you may have seen this morning, who's our VP of, of strategy. Um, so, uh, so again, please come up to us afterwards and ask any questions. So today's demonstration, it is a demo, is all around something called Chronicle. And Chronicle is a product we actually announced as GA today, uh, which really allows you to capture uh, uh, any domain of discourse, the provenance data around that. So essentially, it's, it's domain agnostic, but what we'll do is show you a demo where it's actually, um, uh, we're actually applying it to the art world. And the relationship between provenance and DLT is that Chronicle is backed by Hyperledger Sawtooth. So, so the one page mandatory, what is it we do? Uh, we try to make it easy for people to create multi-party applications. That's it in a nutshell. Um, You'll have probably seen there's a few other companies here. Uh, I sat through a, a demo by Zeev, who are also in this space. Um, uh, Simba Chain are here. There's a number of companies. All of us are looking to try and make it easier for people to consume what are, quite frankly, complex technologies. Um, and we now focus on not just the distributed ledger layer, but also providing support for information security, for smart contracts, and of course, provenance. And we do that through two products. Sextant, so Sextant is Kubernetes native uh, management operations platform. So as well as being members of Hyperledger Foundation, we're also members of the CNCF uh, and heavily involved with, with sort of Kubernetes uh, and the com Kubernetes community. Um, and what does this do? Essentially, it takes care of the orchestration, the deployment, and, and the ongoing uh, management of uh, DLTs and the various service, services that sit above that. And that's really what we're trying to capture here. So Sextant management operations, by the way, there's something called the DLT landscape, which, uh, which Chilla has created and, and curates, which zooms out on this and says, OK, this is what BTP does. But there is also a much bigger picture. There's an ecosystem of, of companies within that management operations space. And there are also companies that are working at different layers in, in this stack. So in the smart contracts uh, area, for example, we support DAML. So DAML is a, a smart contract language originally cr created by digital asset holdings. You might have heard of that. But today, what we're going to focus on is, is Chronicle. And so Chronicle, we will orchestrate the deployment uh, and ongoing management and operations of Chronicle. And in this case, that runs on out of all the distributed ledgers that we currently support. And you'll notice they're all part of the Hyperledger family at this point. Uh, it, it's actually running on, on Sawtooth. So what is it? Um, so it's built on a standard. We think standards are very important, albeit if you get into the standards game too early, then it can obviously cause problems. But with something like ontologies, there's a huge amount of work around the semantic web and so on that's been going on for many years now. And Prov-O, the provenance ontology, is a well-established W3C initiative. Uh, and so what we're doing is basing everything that Chronicle uh, does on that ontology. Now, the problem with that ontology, and I'll come into that in a second, is it is quite abstract. So that's why you then need to sort of provide tooling to sort of create a domain that's specific to your world. And again, as I said, we'll look at the art world as an example. And like everything we do, it's, it's again, part of the, the family. It's, it's powered and, and uh, by, powered by, it's a terrible marketing expression. I do apologize. Please, yeah, cool security. But, you know, it's basically uh, managed and operated by, uh, by, by Sexton. Um, so here in, in sort of simple, simple terms, this is, again, sort of, you know, zooming in on that, that sort of larger, broader picture and saying, well, essentially, here's a, a useful and interesting use case. And, and this is a use case, by the way, that can apply to uh, track and trace. It can apply to the provenance of any digital or physical asset. It doesn't have to go on a physical journey, per se. I'm looking at circular here. Um, in, the, in their case, absolutely, it does. But, but equally, it can apply to the sort of the ownership of something and how that evolves through time. And provenance is key to the value of a work of art. Um, if you can't prove the provenance, you probably won't get, a, you know, you'll probably get a tenth of the price if somebody will buy it uh, or accept it for auction even. So 
if it's a modern application, and uh, I, I think these days, uh, largely, we can think in terms of service-oriented architectures and so on. What we do is we present a GraphQL API, and, and I'll show you that in a second. And the important thing about that is no one is asking you to think or, or worry about any of the underlying uh, uh, infrastructure, the actual DLT itself. You're not exposed to any of that. I mean, if you were working with Sawtooth natively, you'd be creating transaction processes and all sorts of other cool things. In this instance, that's exactly what we do on your behalf. So anytime we store a piece of provenance data, we're actually committing it to the DLT through a transaction process. But all that is, is hidden from view. And of course, you can also run queries. So you can, you can interact uh, from the point of view of your own application, so, so you know, uh, creating a mutation or running a query. But equally, you can also hand off this, and somebody else who needs to run an audit function can then also look at that data independently. And so the guarantees, of course, that you, you're providing are that the data is immutable. Uh, it is indubitable. It's, it's not up for debate. Um, it's because it's stored on, on, on a permissioned uh, DLT. So prov-o, very briefly, I told you it was abstract. I mean, this won't phase a computer scientist. Uh, but you know, if we're talking about entities, agents, and activities, uh, we, we're then having to make that sort of mental uh, leap as to well, what kinds of agents, what kinds of entities, and what kinds of activities, for that matter. And so you know, I, I thoroughly recommend that this is a great read, especially if you're needing to get to sleep. You know, but, um, but no, seriously, the prov uh, uh specification from which this is pulled uh, is you know, extremely thorough, as you would expect. Uh, but what we're going to do is look at a domain-specific example, the art world. Um, and in this world, simplifying it somewhat, the entities that we really care about are the artworks themselves, uh, the agents. Now, agents in the context of, of the art world could be artists producing things. They could be collectors. Of course, there are many other participants in the art world, you know, galleries, auction houses, and so on. And activities will include, and these are just a couple of examples, the creation of an artwork by an artist and the purchase of said artwork by a collector. So that just gives you a flavor. And so you know, what does that mean? Uh, it means in the context of the demo, we're going to talk about uh, a great artwork called Love is in the Bin. Um, it was created by Banksy. And it was created approximately on October the 6th, 2018, at about 9.15 uh, GMT. Um, uh, uh, and it was created at Sotheby's by Banksy remotely. Does anybody know the story? OK, so, so how are we going to, um, how we can actually uh, relate that to here? So I'm going to get out of here and come over to here to the playground. So the playground, this is, I'm literally going to step through, step by step, how Chronicle, and by the way, you know, in real life, you're doing this programmatically, but I just want to sort of show you kind of the behind the scenes. So behind the scenes, behind the scenes, behind the scenes, uh, we're running. Uh, at, at this point for this demo, uh, a standalone version of Chronicle. So I'm not attempting, given the vagaries of, of the interweb, to connect to a running uh, Sawtooth uh, cluster in the cloud, full disclosure. But we do provide an in-memory version for exactly you know, development off, offline and also uh, for demos like this. Um, so it's bad enough having me do a live demo without sort of you know, tempting the gods even more. So, uh, so if I go back to here. Um, and what I can do, and this is, is I can just run a background query. And all this is going to do is just, is just look at you know, what is the activity, when is information uh, committed. Um, and so, and here is a mutation I prepared earlier, because me typing this in front of you would take forever. But we're going to create, uh, we're going to def define an artist who's called Banksy. We don't actually know anything other than that he's just Banksy, OK? Um, and so if I run that, we've now, we've now committed that information. So now we had a plain vanilla blank canvas, art world, get it? Um, but now we've at least asserted there is an artist called Banksy. OK? Uh, next thing we want to do is we want to assert that there is an artwork called Love is in the Bin. Now, the, these, these on, the, on their own, uh, don't actually, you know, there's no relationships yet established. So the next thing we have to do is, is, is actually establish uh, the notion that at some point, um, uh, 
the shredded girl with a balloon became created love is in the bin. Okay? And again, this is all about facts. Okay? We're not saying whether that was a good or a bad thing. There are no opinions here. I have plenty of opinions. You can come up to me afterwards. But in the context of Chronicle, it's all about just establishing the facts. Did something happen? If so, let's write it down. Um, we can then debate and query and, and was that the right thing to happen and so forth and so on. But yeah, so, so at some point, uh, love is in the bin came into existence. Um, and then we want to say, well, um, wait a second. That's a very long. Um, so now, so now, okay. So we're now establishing the the entity love is in the bin is actually the subject of created. Um, love is in the bin. Now this might seem a little kind of convoluted. It is if you're me trying to do this by hand, but th this is all about building up that sort of that relationship map between the entities, the agents, and the activities. And so the final thing we need to do, if I scroll across here, oh, and by the way, stuff is happening, okay? Proof, okay? Uh, more stuff is happening, okay? This is a live demo. Um, um, Chiller will explain what that stuff means uh, afterwards. Um, and then finally, and this is closing the loop, so to speak, we've got to then establish you know, this activity of creation of love is in the bin. When did it happen? In this case, it happened instantaneously when Banksy or somebody uh, on his behalf sort of triggered the shredding of the, the, um, the picture. And that had to happen at a precise moment, which was, uh, which was when the art uh, work was sold. Um, and so again, you know, we're associating now Banksy as the, as the agent, uh, in this case, the artist. Um, and so there we have it. So all it remains to do is to then you know, run queries. And again, here is a very simplistic query, which in the interest of time, because I'm nearly out of time, simply allows us to say, OK, tell me everything you know about uh, uh, the entity, the artwork, uh, love is in the bin. And if I've got this right, drum roll, we can see that it was created on October the 6th, 2018. I forgot to tell you that was precisely uh, the date we plugged this in. Uh, now, obviously, if we we're running Chronicle in real time, we would be recording things as they happen rather than, um, let's say, uh, recreating a timeline. I was going to do the Mona Lisa, but since that was painted in 1517, any of you know whether that would be a problem or not? It's pre-epoch, so, um, and of course it says here that you know it was, you know ultimately it was Banksy that created it. So, so that's the demo. Um, and uh, in terms of practical applications, uh, uh, there is a post that uh, we put out today describing in a little bit more detail what we've been up to. Nice picture of uh, Dublin there, um, and that's going into a little bit more detail how and where we see this 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 operating. And, and I would call out by the way that Chiller has also written a number of posts and a, a little bit further back actually wrote about um, the is provenance a killer app for DLT. So so I would recommend that, you know, there we go, is provenance a killer app for <coughs> blockchain stroke DLT. Um, uh, so you, you'll notice that we, we do like art. It, it, it gives us a sense of, oh, we're actually connecting with the real world as opposed to, you know, uh, um, and then finally, um, Again, these resources are available to you if you want to know a bit more about what happened and how it happened, if you're not familiar with the story. That is, love is in the bin. Um, and that's, that's it, really. Uh, we'll publish these, attach them to the, um, to the, uh, the uh, schedule. Um, and you can then also sort of browse the documentation, which is hot off the press. So, uh, um, uh, and... Uh, in truth, at 7.45 a.m. this morning, I did not have a demo. <laughs> at 11.30, after spending two hours in a, in, in a cafe, halfway here, I'm missing Chilla doing her panel, for which she's only just forgiven me. Um, we had a demo, so hurrah. Anyway, thank you very much for your time. Please you know, enjoy the rest of the, the uh, conference, and by all means, you know, 
catch up with us afterwards. Thanks very much.